welcome back to the World Beyond Belief. I'm Mindy Yerkin, and with me tonight is Paul Marco. Thank you, and uh, welcome back to another episode of the World Beyond Belief. Well, in this podcast, we are going to continue to explore a document called The Secret Government, written by Bill Cooper, that explains what was really going on regarding the alien problem while we were being gaslighted by Project Blue Book. Oh, yeah. Well, like last episode, like last podcast, we're going to continue to ridicule the cabal and the government's process of labeling their projects and missions strange and misleading titles that keep the public from knowing what's going on until it's way too late, like Operation Paperclip. Now, that had nothing to do with paper or clips. What it did, it transferred a thousand Nazi scientists and psychologists over here to continue the same good work they were doing for Nazi Germany. You know, creating weapons of mass destruction and delivery systems to get those mass, mass destruction out there. And also, of course, the 500 psychologists that were brought over. Now, these are Nazi psychologists, so what, do you, what kind of projects do you think they're working on? And they continued that work every day. So Operation Paperclip was, was a real fraud and a ruse. So to continue to ridicule that process and some bring, bring some attention to that, that deceitful way of doing things, we're going to continue with our sound tonight. So, to bring you up to date on what we discussed in the last podcast, we began by talking about the removal from duty, gaslighting, and finally suiciding of Admiral James Forrestal. Now, as you might know, gaslighting is all about making you think you're crazy by the things, you know, making you think the things you do, the things you say are crazy, and discrediting you in the eyes of everyone else, in addition to having you feel like you're, you've lost your mind. Yeah, you just doubt your own sanity after a while. We then discussed how the cabal, disguised as the U.S. government, used a program called Operation Blue Book to gaslight the entire world population. We gave some background of our featured author, researcher, and patriot, Bill Cooper. Basically, it was a Vietnam War hero, many times decorated, part of the intelligence community, and a ballsy guy who exposed lies and liars in the U.S. government. He predicted September 11th on June 2001 and said that the government would blame this on Osama bin Laden. He was shut up by force. I'm talking about Bill Cooper. Executed in a police raid on his home in November of 2001. From his book, we began to see what was going on behind our collective backs while we were fooled, tricked, bamboozled, discredited, shut up, and frustrated by Operation Blue Book. We looked at the number and type of alien crafts that crashed in the U.S. throughout the world. We learned that many aliens were recovered alive. Many had died, and some crafts contained a cache of human body parts. We also learned about Eby, the alien who was in possession, he, he was possessed. <laughs> Let's start off. The alien who was in the possession of the U.S. government for three years, being interrogated and he'll, until his death in 1952. We came to know that the CIA, the NSA, were basically created a deal with the alien problem. We, find out, we found out why the Bilderberg Group was created. Then we moved along to the Eisenhower administration and how he and his cabal buddies handled the initial alien contact, face-to-face -face contact, yes. 
This contact was with benevolent human-looking aliens who offered to help with our spiritual development. God knows we need it. In return for us giving up our nuclear war machines. Ike and the Cabal, of course, said no, having no interest in spiritual development, except for the type of stuff they could get from Bohemian Grove, and certainly no interest in giving up the weapons that kept them on top of the power cut. So we learned that most of Eisenhower's administration, including Ike himself, were CFR members. We learned the purpose of the CFR, or Council on Foreign Relations, was to manufacture consent by discrediting people holding opposing views and not allowing their public access so that people can learn the other side of the coin. They're still at it today. They got us into wars like Vietnam, Iraq, and all the other wars that benefit, that benefit nobody else but the inbred elite. So now you're up to date. Let's continue with the tale. Later in 1954, the race of large-nosed gray aliens, which had been orbiting the Earth, landed at Holloman Air Force Base. A basic agreement was reached. This race identified themselves as originating from a planet around a red star in the constellation of Orion, which we call Betelgeuse. They stated that their planet was dying and at some unknown future time, they would no longer be able to survive there. This led to a second landing at Edwards Air Force Base. The historical event had been planned in advance, and the details of the treaty had been agreed upon. Eisenhower arranged to be in Palm Springs on vacation. On the appointed day, the president was spirited away to the base, and the excuse was given to the press that he was visiting a dentist. President Eisenhower met with the aliens and a formal treaty between the alien nation and the United States of America was signed. We then received our first alien ambassador from outer space. His name and title was His Omnipotent Highness Krill. In the American tradition of disdain for royal titles, he was secretly called Original Hostage Krill. You should know that the alien flag is known as the trilateral insignia. It is displayed on their craft and their uniforms. Both of these landings and the second meeting were filmed. The films exist today. Now keep in mind that this was published in May 23rd, 1989, so today was many days ago. <laughs> That's right. The treaty stated the aliens would not interfere in our affairs and we would not interfere in theirs. We would keep their presence on Earth a secret. They would furnish us with advanced technology and help us in our technological development. They would not make any treaty with any other Earth nation. They could abduct humans on a limited and periodic basis for the purpose of medical examination and monitoring of our development with the stipulation that the humans would not be harmed, would be returned to the point of their abduction that the humans would have no memory of the events. Thank you, Agent K. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you will, look right here. And that the alien nation would furnish MJ-12 with a list of all human contacts and abductees on a regularly scheduled basis. It was agreed that each nation would receive the ambassador of the other for as long as the treaty remained in force. It was further agreed that the alien nation and the United States would exchange 16 personnel each to the other with the purpose of learning each of the other. The alien guests would remain on the earth and the human guests would travel to the alien point of origin for a specified period of time then return, at which point a reverse exchange would be made. It was also agreed that bases would be constructed underground for the use of the alien nation, and that two bases would be constructed for the joint use of the alien nation and the United States government. Exchange of technology would take place in the jointly occupied bases. 
These alien bases would be constructed under Indian reservations in the Four Corners area of Utah, New Mexico, Arizona, and Colorado. And one would be constructed in Nevada in the area known as S-4, located approximately seven miles south of the western border of Area 51, known as Dreamland. All alien bases are under complete control of the Naval Department, and all personnel who work in these complexes receive their checks from the Navy. Construction of the bases began immediately, but progress was slow until large amounts of money were made available in 1957. Work continued on the Yellow Book. Now, I'm not a military guy. God knows I only got up to Cub Scouts. That was miserable years. The stress of the not tying. I think I still have post-traumatic stress from my military days. But it seems to me the treaty might not be exactly the right word for the agreement. For the agreement that they, that they signed. I mean, a treaty is what happens between two parties that are like equal in strength or or one can do something to the other you know if the treaty's not kept you know you don't make a treaty with the school young boy he just does what he wants and he takes what he wants i mean that's what it is now picture it's 1950s and uh somehow these guys got here from uh beetlejuice now in order to travel that far you either have to have a really fast ship i mean incredibly fast or you have to know how to bend time and space to get here. Okay, so that's the type of technology, that's the type of people we're signing a treaty with. So now picture the average computer in 1950. It's, it's enormous and it doesn't do much. So, that, so that, what I'm saying is the difference between the two civilizations, it wasn't a treaty. I'll tell you what it was. It was a surrender. That day, Eisenhower, once and for all, surrendered to this ali these alien graves. And keep in mind that this surrender wasn't just between two governments, were involved. It gave them permission to forcibly abduct people. We can't, they, what, the government can't protect us from that. They signed a treaty to allow them to do that. Anyway, I think it's time for outrage, but back to the story. <laughs> All right, back to the story. Project Red Light was formed, and experimentation in test flying alien aircraft was begun in earnest. A super top secret facility was built at Groom Lake in.